Good evening, everyone. My name is Rebecca Reed. My pronouns are she, her, and I'm very happy that you've all joined us this evening. One of my spiritual homes is a beautiful land between the ocean and the pine trees in Maine. It is a place where the sounds of ukulele jam sessions flow through the porches of the campus and through the trees. I grew up going to Ferry Beach, a Unitarian Universalist conference center, every summer, so my roots there run deep. One of my favorite rituals is the bridging ceremony, when the oldest youth who are aging out of the program bridge into young adulthood. During the ceremony, each bridger writes a reflection that they read in front of the community, and then they choose someone to speak on their behalf about their journey to young adulthood. It is a moving moment to experience, and everyone ends up misty-eyed, even if they don't know the bridgers personally. The ceremony ends with the whole community walking to the beach where the teams cross the bridge to the shore, a metaphor for crossing from childhood into young adulthood. A moment that stuck most with me was when we stood side by side, holding hands in a circle on the beach as we sang Swimming to the Other Side by Pat Humphreys, who where I come from is considered Unitarian Universalist music royalty. The harmonies sung during this moment take me to a place where all is well. All is beautiful. Everything feels whole. I am surrounded by my beloved community under the moonlight and the stars, waves crashing softly in the background. Even though we can't see each other well in the dark, our voices are strong, and we are reminding the young adults that they are always surrounded by their beloved community, no matter where the next year takes them post high school, and that the people in this circle will always welcome them home. On this journey through thoughts and feelings, binding intuition, my head, my heart, I am gathering the tools together, I'm preparing to do my part. All of those who have come before me, band together and be my guide, loving lessons that I will follow, we're all swimming to the other side. These words echoed in my head as I left for college in Burlington, Vermont in fall of 2011. I felt really alone in the beginning as I was trying to find my people and often found myself humming swimming to the other side when I walked alone on campus. This reminded me of the support network I had, the people who would always pick up when I called, and all the lessons and values my Ferry Beach community raised me with. The summer before I left for college, I remember an adult telling me, step outside your comfort zone and say yes to new experiences. When I felt like I wasn't fitting in and that I hadn't found my people yet, I remembered these two lessons and signed up for an equestrian team and event attended events put on by our student government. At the first equestrian team meeting, I met Laura, someone who would quickly become a close friend by the end of the year. We ended up studying abroad together and spoke French all the time. Had I not said yes to the new experience of riding horses, I wouldn't have met someone who would bring me so much joy throughout my entire college experience. Thinking of this song by Pat Humphreys during the moments when I felt alone called me to remember my community in Maine, the lessons they taught me, and the song brought me comfort when I wasn't physically in the presence of my people because it reminded me of their wisdom and encouragement. Why is it that the person you least want to be stuck in an elevator with always seems to be the person that you end up in the elevator with the most? Every time. I'll come back to this question in a minute. During the pandemic, there was a moment I felt the world was falling apart. Before it began, I taught in a middle school as an English teacher, surrounded by people, having endless conversations with endless numbers of people. There was always a problem to solve with a colleague, a student to check in with, or a family to call. Never a quiet moment for me. Then, all of a sudden, I was alone in my kitchen, trying to finish the school year online, doing it all from my kitchen table. I missed having people all around me. 
So the person I least wanted to be stuck in the elevator with was one of the social studies teachers because he always wanted to talk with me about the Bruins, something I don't like to talk about because I know nothing about the Bruins and I don't care too much about sports, unless it's about Simone Biles at the Olympics. Before the pandemic, I always seemed to catch this teacher in the elevator at the same time as we usually got to school at 7.15, taking the elevator to the teacher's workroom. It would happen again as we got ready for our fourth period class and again on the way to dismissal duty. Each day, I seemed to catch him in the elevator with me during at least one of those moments with his enthusiasm for hockey in full force. I remember thinking as I was waiting for students to sign into my Zoom lesson for reading one morning, that I would give anything to have a conversation with him about the top players on the team and their statistics. How many goals Brad Marchand scored and how many saves Tuka Rask had. I suddenly had a desire to learn everything there was to know about the Bruins and I wanted to learn it from him. I also missed greeting Carmen in the main office. She always bookended my days with a hello and goodbye through the main office window. She always wore bright skirts that were a little too bright for my pastel color palette and I quickly realized I was missing that bold color in my life. My world seemed dull now. I actually loved having bright color in my life. Out of my pain, grief, and isolation, I reached out to others in my Fairy Beach community to put on three online worship services to recreate moments and milestones that were lost. During the holidays, people were longing to be together, so I put together a holiday sing-along. Our graduates were celebrating a major milestone when they were uncertain about what was to come in the upcoming months, so we marked the occasion with a Zoom graduation. One of the graduates told me afterwards that it was more meaningful than the one that the college put on for them. When the director of religious education from my childhood church finished her career, we came together to celebrate virtually. These all involved members of the community sharing words that they wrote and we sang together as much as we sing here at our sanctuary worship services. We are going to a place where music falls and fills up everything. And though it might be a long Broke it, Matt. You fixed it, Matt. As the faces of my loved ones from Fairy Beach popped up in their Zoom squares, I felt instantly at ease. The experience of seeing each person join individually or with their families and remembering the way each person sounded and laughed made me realize that for these 45 minutes, everything felt whole. Being back in community in these moments when we were so far apart in distance made me feel deeply connected and so many memories came flooding back. I was reminded that peer connection isn't always deep conversation. It can be in the collective breath before the chorus starts or the way someone makes eye contact with you and has a slight smile on their face during a part of a song where you both think of one another. Music is a way we can bring people together for a shared experience full of meaning. I know it's gonna be alright Cause we've already started to see I recently read more about Bernice Regan, who was a founding member of the Freedom Singers, a part of the civil rights movement and partnered with the Student Nonviolent Coordinating Committee. She understood the power of song to bring people together and unify them during the protests for civil rights in the South. Regan recalled, after a song, the differences between us were not so great. Somehow making a song required an expression of that which is common to us all. 
This music was like an instrument, like holding a tool in your hand. We are the ones, we are the ones we've been waiting. We, we are, are the ones, we are the ones we've been waiting. We are the ones, we are the ones we've been waiting. We are the ones, we are the ones we've been waiting. We are the ones, we are the ones we've been waiting. We are the ones, we are the ones we've been waiting. When I was in middle school, I remember joining members of my childhood church in protest against incarceration at the Suffolk County House of Correction. Groups from my congregation went a few times and we sang songs on the outside and saw reactions from the people who were incarcerated who could hear what we were singing and chanting. Singing together was a tool that we used to band our voices together and create something that was louder than our individual selves. We are the ones, we are the ones we've been waiting. We are the ones, we are the ones we've been waiting. Music is a spiritual tool that can remind us that we are more powerful when we join together. Spiritual tools can bring us to a place of balance even when it feels like the world is falling apart. We have a tool that we can use to refill our hearts even when the people in our support network aren't available in the moment. I encourage you to take a moment to think about what is feeling heavy on your heart this evening. How might music hold you in this heaviness? What lyrics or sounds are most healing to you or bring you a sense of love and comfort when you are trying to put the pieces back together? Music is a spiritual practice that provides comfort, brings communities together, and we can use it as a tool to move towards justice. Beloved, I encourage you to think about how music can provide you with a sense of love and comfort during difficult times. What lyrics might hold you in this heaviness? Music and sound are powerful tools we can access in many situations that help reground us when the people in our support network aren't available in the moment. We can use music to provide comfort, deepen our relationships with others, and work towards a more just and equitable world.